Hello. Well, I'm getting ready to make some of my homemade hot dog sauce. I finally found my recipe. Um, it's on my, here it is. It took me, I don't know how long, I think my brain just wasn't thinking where I didn't sleep last night, but um, I want to get this hot dog sauce made. Uh, it's going to be canned, but it's, it's going to be a good hot dog sauce, and that's the thing I want to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and can uh, another batch of my beans. I had some soaking. So that's what I'm hoping to get done, but I can always make the hot dog sauce. And then if I don't get to canning it tonight, which I probably won't unless, you know, but I can make it. So I'm going to start making it. And I'll tell you, if you've never had this before, it's really, really good hot dog sauce. It's really plain and good. And it's one of them that you have to kind of cook down, okay? You cook it down. I did not bring me... Probably end up filling that up anyway. It's one of them you cook down. Uh, it's not you just throw it in a... Not one of them you just throw in a skillet. And... Uh, Make a sloppy joe-like sauce to put on your hot dog. This is an actual, real hot dog sauce. Ooh. Yep, I'm going to lose it anyway. Do you ever have to battle to get something done? I'm going to put that right there. And then I'll have something to put all my stuff in a sack. All right, now, oh no, well, Laura, I've been praying for him, there's been so many people, you know, that, um, been praying for I hate to hear that he took a turn. It got better and then took a turn for the worst. I know Jensen is home. He he went through a battle with COVID, and he seems to be doing better. And Janice, ooh, them are strong. <sighs> I'm gonna see if this works. Okay, hold on just a second. Someone told me, or I seen it online or something, to lay a rag wet beside your onion, and I'm going to see if it works. And they say that that onion draws to the water, draws moisture, so we'll see. We will see. I'm going to pop these onions up and put them. I'm going to start this on low, okay, because we're going to take some oil, just about a tablespoon or two, okay, I always keep my olive oil, they say the greener the oil, the better the olive oil is, and this, this is one that I've got that's really, really green colored. So, this hot dog sauce, let's put this over here, is one that I always stick with, but I, I decided this year I was going to can it so we'd have it and I wouldn't have to make it all the time. Okay. 
I think I made this last year, but you just take three to four pounds of hamburger, which I'm going to take five, because I need to use that. I got it at Kroger's the other day. Get that over there by that rag, Pamela. And uh, I got certain meats to... Well, we'll fix that. Won't we? I got certain meats to uh, can. So that's what I'm doing with it. I'm making it into stuff to can. Chop that up that way. So how's everybody doing? I hope okay. So this is a hot dog sauce that um, you used to get. Will they come back already? All right. You used to get down to... Um, like to steer in and places like that. Okay. I've added a couple little things to it for our taste, but it's it's really a good hot dog sauce. You'll probably see Tom and Jimmy come in. I sent them on a errand. Well, I didn't send them. They said they was going on the errand. So I'm just going to dump that in a pan. This is my induction cooker over here. Over there, but I'll turn you around here and let you see it. See, I got the inductor, induction cooker going with my copper pot. Them are nice to have because they're an extra stove an extra you know when you don't want to stand over the stove and I'll have my canner going over there and this going over here so you're going to take them onions and you're just going to put them in there let them saute Okay. I'm making uh, my hot dog sauce, uh, Michelle. I don't have any more big onions, but I sure got some little ones. Tom likes the little onions. If I want to make the big ones, I have to usually go buy them because we stay stocked on the little ones. But it'll be enough. Just basically you want to do two to three onions. So these three little ones I got here will probably make a big one. So I'll put two. The dog's having a belly ache because she knows her daddy's out there. Okay, uh, I'll post the recipe because I got it. My this thing is not helping because it's way over there. I made myself go get the meat and stuff for this stuff so I would make myself do it. Because I don't want to waste it, and Tom didn't put it in the freezer. Because if he had put it in the freezer, it might not have got done as quick. So I told him not to. So 
that's sitting there just sauteing. In the induction cooker. He'll be in a little bit, don't worry. All right, get that in there. All right, so we'll do these and then we'll just throw them in there. So, you know, depending on how much you like onion, two onions to three, you know. And I'm going to use five pounds, so I'll probably put some, like, onion flakes in it, too. There's a whole thing. See, that makes a good big onion. I can't believe them bake them beanie weenies how good they are. See, I want to get all this stuff done so we can start on the the sweet the sweeter stuff toward the holidays, you know. We got a grandson coming in November. A new baby. And um, so we're going we're going to try to work in and out of that you know what I mean before or after but I think we should do it before because I'm not going to be into it after <laughs> after that baby comes well, who wants to make a pumpkin roll but the special things about it is mom you know hopefully this year she'll still be able to um, she's talking like she's coming this is one thing that she absolutely loves Oh, okay. Well, this worked a little bit, but I kept shoving it away. <laughs> You're supposed to put, um, let's see here. I've got this root down finally. Finally, finally, finally. What do I have there? Because I'm not one to two tablespoons of garlic. And I know I do not have that in here. I've got one tablespoon. And I will add some um, garlic powder to this later. But if you can get some in there, that's the thing. Getting that all married in together. List. Grocery list. Wow, yeah, you better make it good, Michelle. Okay, now I'm going to turn that up just a little bit. And get that sautéed. Because what we're going to do is make this a, a, like a translucent. So you start out doing that. Just get you a pot, you know, get them cooked down to where they look, you can almost see through them like, you know, how that is. Anybody that's cooked a while knows what translucent onions look like. Okay. Just a tad. I didn't put enough oil on that. Okay, now it's a good one. So use, you know, two to three onions. I'm saying I use two big ones because I had three little ones and one big one. So I use that and I'll probably put some onion powder in it and some garlic powder. No, onion flakes. I have minced onion. But I want to have real onion too. I don't like using that minced onion without having real in it. Now, the story is, 
I was telling somebody this morning that called, I said, who in the world but me would take three and a half weeks to make kraut and can it and then make all that relish and cut it up and make relish and then make the hot dog sauce and can it just to have a good hot dog. Because there's nothing like a hot dog with homemade relish, homemade kraut, and um, homemade hot dog sauce. But I like to do things like that, you know? I like to just build upon something. And if it takes time, that's fine. I'm not in no hurry. I know in my mind it's going to taste good when I get there. It's like putting up with the work down here on earth. You know it's going to be good when you leave it. Okay, that's getting pretty translucent. I'll show you what it looks like. Whoops, I dropped some. Get back here. I need every little bit of that onion I can get. All right, so that's doing good. Now we'll get that big thing of amber. And what I'll do, this is uh, when I get this done and it cools down, I'll put it in the refrigerator overnight and every bit of that grease will go up. Okay? And I'll just skim it right off of there. So we got this. That way I won't have to worry about having a lot of grease in the jars. So let's get this in here. Let's get this big boy in here. It's unlocked. Ah, I'm trying to unlock a locked door or an unlocked door. I'm online. Say hi. Hi. Angie wants you to call her at her house phone. She's got some questions she needs to ask you about the the uh, scrapbooks and photo albums and stuff like that. All right, so we got this. Now I'm putting five pounds in there. Because I got to use every bit of it. Can you hand me that black thing here, Tom? You on break? He's on break. <laughs> right there by the red spatula. In the, it's in my utensil thing here, right here. The utensil crock, yeah, not that, it's right beside it, the black thing. There you go. Janelle got it for me. I don't know what you really call it. Thank you, sir. Like a rudder. A rudder? He said it looks like a rudder. <laughs> What's a rudder? In the back of a rowboat. The back of a rowboat. Oh, okay. Will you hand me that rowboat rudder? <laughs> My wonderful husband went out and him and his son swept the church for me because of my knee the way it is. And I was so fretting about wanting to get that done. And he just went right out there and done it. I gave it a really good cleaning last time I was out there. So, she's been what she heard you pull in and she started whining. So you want to brown all this hamburger. If you want to can it, you know, 
uh, Michelle, you may can it because you have a canner. Um, Vicki, you may can it. Anybody that cans. But if you don't want to can it, you can freeze it. it same way. Wipe this off with that little wet rag. Yeah, she said to call her out her house because her cell phone don't work at home anymore. Hmm? Home number, yeah. Okay. Another thing I couldn't find is mustard, so I'm going to use mustard powder. Same, you know, it works the same. I, th I thought at one time we bought all kinds of mustard. Okay, I, it don't go in yet anyway. It's got a minute. So this is your second step. The first step is your little bit of oil and um, onions. And then you put your garlic in because you don't want to burn that garlic. But... Uh, Make your onions translucent in your pot. And then when that gets done, and you put your garlic in, then you can throw your hamburger in. You give that garlic a few stirs. And then mix that hamburger all up in that. You see what I'm doing with Tom's rudder? <laughs> Just mix all that up in there. We'll use this wooden spoon to mix the onions into it. And once that gets brown, then you're going to have to put water in it, okay? Because that's what breaks up all that um, hamburger. So I'm breaking it up. I got it pretty well broke up, you know. But you really don't have to work that hard on that because the water is going to break it up. I'm just making it level so that the water will just go over it level okay so I've got some water here and I'm just gonna I can take that off there and show you what I'm doing here turn light on, turn light on. oh that's gonna beat until I get that pot back on there it's letting me know it's off of there you pour that water over that beef just until it covers it up. You don't have to pour it clear up the top of your... Just cover that beef up. Now I'll put it back on there. It'll be quiet. And then you're going to just kind of let that brown in there now. Then you're going to put the rest of your stuff in it and let it cook down. So let me see what I got here on my notes. So we're at the point where we uh, chop the onions, we cook them, in, you know, cook them in until they're translucent, add the garlic, and cook all that till it's trans, all done translucent. Add the ground chuck and pour enough water over ground chuck and onion mixture to cover. Okay, that's where we're at now. We just covered that ground chuck. You got to make some of this. I mean, it's really good. If you got some people coming in or something. Um, so I broke up the ground chuck in the water, which I'm doing now. Okay, because that's when you want to really break it up is when it gets in the water. Uh, Michelle, just, it, there's no set amount. I had five pounds of chuck, so I put one quart of water over it. Um, just make sure it's covered. I'll send you the recipe, but just make sure that hamburger's covered. And then after it's covered, you don't put any more water in it. That's what's going to break up your hamburger, and that's how you're going to brown your hamburger. You don't brown it 
before you put the water on it. You let the water brown it, okay? Because that's what makes a good, nice sauce, you know, without them big chunks falling off your hot dog and all that, you know? So, then we'll get that brown. Then's when we add all the other stuff, okay? I'll show you if I can what that looks like. See, that's what it's going to look like. You're going to let that water just... I just poured it over and it's already soaking it up and browning it. I don't want to put any more over it. So see how that's starting to get brown? But I had five pounds and I put a quart poured over it. Once that browns, then I'll put the rest of the um, ingredients in for you. I will definitely post the recipe right under here. I did it last year, but I had to go down all them lives I had. I went through Christmas, I went through November, <laughs> all of them, and I finally found it and I copied it so I could paste it onto this one. So that's cooking that up and letting it get brown. And I'll show you the ingredients that will um, be next. Okay. After that browns, then we're going to add chili powder. Okay. This was a cheaper chili powder. Um, but it doesn't matter what chili powder you use. If you like it hot, use the Chipotle. Or I do have the hotter chili uh, mix in there. I bought it by accident to put in salsa uh, when I done the Tupperware party in Jackson. But I may split this up and make one or two hot. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows what I'll do. But anyway, we're going to take a uh, chili powder, Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, or whatever you call it, um, salt. I used uh, smoked sea salt, salt to give it a smoky flavor. It doesn't give it much of a smoky flavor. And pepper. Um, you use mustard. We're going to be using two tablespoons of mustard, but I couldn't find mine enough, so I'm using mustard powder. Either way, it works the same way I use it in my baked beans. Um, two cups of ketchup, any kind of ketchup. Okay, two cups of that, and I'll probably put a little bit extra of that. And, um, okay, we're going to be using brown sugar. Okay, now, when I use brown sugar and Worcestershire sauce, it's, I always use vinegar, but I, I don't in my hot dog sauce. I don't know why, but to me, everything that I add or take away or whatever, it all has to have a little bit of a different flavor. I don't want to use the same base for the baked beans, for the hot dog sauce, you know, for spaghetti sauce. You, you want to have that different bit of flavor for each one. Just ground up here. I turned it down and it didn't want to do nothing. So that's what you're going to add and a little can of tomato paste. Now I've got some tomato powder over there. 
I could use it, but I had a can of this, so I'm going to use it because I've had this probably about six or seven months. So I'm going to go ahead and use it, get, get done with it, and start on another one. Start getting new in. So we'll let that cook up and get brown. And then we'll just start adding the stuff. Anytime you make anything um, with a sort of a, bar, a, a homemade barbecue, if you put Worcestershire um, vinegar, apple, apple cider vinegar, and ketchup and a little bit of mustard together, if you want to make it hot, you can. Um, you can just add some hot chili powder or something like that. But that's your basic if you want a good barbecued um, barbecue sauce. You can add onion flakes or anything. But them three items right there, the brown sugar, Worcestershire, and the um, apple cider vinegar will make a good base for any kind of a sauce you want. Which I've got to make some sauce here in a little bit for my beanie weenies I'm going to be making because i got to have some more. It, it was just such a success that I just want, I want to have some more of them on the shelf. Oh, yeah, it's not much longer. I went through, one of the things we're going to do is the pumpkin rolls. Of course, that's a live, you know. And uh, toward Christmas, I'm not, probably right after Thanksgiving, I'm going to start, and I can make these and freeze them. So I can make them anytime. But I'm going to be making the fudges, the, um, the nougat fudge, my different fudges. I make the chocolate mintha cream. But I want to make the peppermint buckeyes, okay, for Christmas. Them are out of this world. And I just made I just had to put stuff together one year because I I get these ideas like with my dream sickle fudge. You get these ideas and if you just put them together, they make a good recipe for you. But I've got it online, so it's not a secret. I mean, I've got the got it online. I'm making them, you know. The trick is, you know, I found out uh, through the years is you can give people your recipes, but sometimes they can't make it like you do. It doesn't work out the, the same way. Uh, so, and, and there's a lot of people that don't have time, you know, to make them. So they just have you to make them because they know it's going to turn out, you know. So I don't mind giving the recipes for things. That's something you always want to share. But I did see the video of me making them mint buckeyes today when I was looking for this video. Come on, get brown. Well, it's like I said with this, you can't hurry it. You have got to let it, because once it gets brown, then we're going to put the ingredients in it, and it's just going to cook down. That's the thing I wanted to tell you. Um, oh, okay. I'll have to put, if you use that tomato paste, it's optional, which I do use it. I always use that stuff, but if you use it, I put down here, if you do use the tomato paste to make it a little bit thicker, make sure you put, what I say here, a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half or something like that of white sugar. It cuts that, you don't want a real tomatoey uh, taste. Who's that? <laughs> We're turning around probably. So, you know, it's optional if you want to use this or not. But it does make it a little bit thicker. 
I probably won't put much in because I'm going to be canning this and that'll just make it thicker right there. But I think the uh, canning it will make the flavors, you know, pressure cook into that pressure cooker in the jars. And then as it sits on the shelf, it's going to intensify that flavor. So watch what you put in it. Um, if you put hot chili, it's going to intensify that under pressure. So I watch how much I put of certain things in. Just like the uh, beanie weenies, I did them last week. And let's see, it was Thursday. No, I done them Wednesday. And because Thursday's when I opened them up and showed you and ate some of them, and they were really, really good. Well, I, th I just couldn't help it. I had to try them again after they've set for a week. Little bit different. Just a little bit different. But what it did was it kind of made it taste just like a pork and bean and weenie and it, it when I first tasted it it was more it just married in together and pressure cooked and made it do what it was supposed to do somehow but if you use these three ingredients like I told you it'll make anything you make that you have to put that sauce in it'll make it good So that's a base I use all the time. That's starting to get brown now. Now that I'm letting it cook. And it's going to smell amazing in here while this is cooking. Tom may have to have him a hot dog. One other thing I've noticed about my beanie weenies though. I put the rest of the little wieners in that last jar that I opened up first, and it was really good. But I don't think there's enough slices of weenies in that, in my wieners. I put three or four cut up of the little tiny wieners, but I think there needs to be a little more in it, because when it cooks, they shrink, and they don't swell up. They actually shrink. <laughs> so... I think I need to put more of them in this time. If you think about it, I spent five dollars, not quite five dollars, making the beanie weenies. I think the well, the pound of uh, navy beans was a dollar twenty-four. I bought them at the store. My other ingredients was pretty well here that I keep on stock. But then the little wieners, they were $3 a pack. So that's three, four, I'd say $5. I had six pints of beanie weenies, okay? In the store, the cheapest I've seen them, 99 cents for a little thing like that of beanie weenies, okay? 99 cents so it it does pay to go ahead and try to can that stuff up if you eat it if you eat that stuff plus you don't have all that other stuff to you know in it you got just what you put in it this here I don't know yet, I haven't canned it, but it makes a lot. It makes a whole lot. Um, now, I'm not going to put them in um, pints. The hot dog sauce, I'm going to half pint it because there's no way we would eat a pint of hot dog sauce. I think a half, of, unless you have a big family, but a half a pint, I think, is a, a good jar. He found all kinds of half pint jars I had in the garage so a half pint I think would be a good size uh, to put the hot dog sauce in like the 
which you put jelly in. And the Nesco canner, it'll do like nine, I think, of half pints in one, one setting. And it's hard to tell with Hank, with Hank, the All-American, what he would make, you know. So this is getting brown now. I keep saying that. It is getting brown. Tom looks over at me every time I say, it's getting brown now. Lisa... I was thinking about that very thing today. I even like the beanie weenies thrown over mashed potatoes. I mean, I've always liked that kind of stuff. Like when we would go to KFC when the kids was little, I would get their baked bean thrown over my mashed potatoes instead of gravy. But what I'm wanting to do, Lisa, is... Uh, do you have that on there? Yeah, cornbread. Make some cornbread... And this is a southern uh, dish. Cornbread and pour them beanie weenies over. Or just pour, you know, your beans. Uh, and that little added extra fried potatoes would be good with it. <laughs> so, I've got my beans already soaked. I'm going to get the sauce done. And while this is cooking down, I can... Uh, Marion in there and the, with the onions getting real soft. And I wished you could smell it now. It already smells good. Now, I won't put that uh, little bit of tomato paste in until the latter part, okay? Because I, I don't want to get it in there to get it thickened up and not be able to do anything about it. Because, like I said, them three base things is going to make it. Okay. Now, that's brown. I'll show you what it looks like so you can tell when you do it. Let me see here. Right here. See how brown that is? And you can see that water, you know. See that bubbling just a little bit? Now that's where you want to start adding your uh, flavor stuff, okay? Now let's just add the flavors to it. Let's see, what do I have here? What do I put first? Okay, we're going to put the chili powder in now. And we do, it says one heaping, but that's for three to four pounds, and I put five pounds, so I'm going to put a little more in. we got to have that little bit of a chili taste in that hot dog sauce. Don't get nervous. <laughs> Tom's over there going, like I'm putting way too much in. Don't worry, I'm not going to ruin it at this point. Now we got the chili powder in there. So I put a tablespoon and a half, since I put an extra pound of meat in it. Okay. Now... We got the chili powder, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Doo -doo -doo. Are you getting nervous? <laughs> if it was Tom, he'd just want the hamburger and onions to be done with the rest. I'm going to put an extra half a tablespoon in because I put the extra pound. Just wing it. Um, 
right now I got it cooking at 190. Just do like a between medium and low on your stove. I've got this on the induction cooker. All right, so we got the, that. We got the Worcestershire Shire sauce and the chili powder. You can smell that Worcestershire Shire sauce. It'll marry in good. Now we do one teaspoon of pepper. Do half of a tablespoon. Ooh. Back in there. There, got the pepper in. I've done a teaspoon of pepper. I'm not gonna add any for that extra pound. But I'm gonna do a teaspoon, well, I can't get that in there. A teaspoon of salt, which I'm using the smoked sea salt, which you don't have to, it doesn't call for it. But I've been trying to use this in some stuff. Now to me, with all these other ingredients, I think we should, you know, a little bit of liquid smoke would just bring that right up. But I do that in my baked bean, pork and beans, because it gives it that back, background flavor of smoky baked, you know, in your jar. But I'm not going to put it in this. I do my meatballs, but I don't this. This has got to have sort of a flavor of its own. All right, we got the, let me see here. We got the um, chili powder, Worcestershire Shire sauce, the pepper and salt, and now we want two tablespoons of mustard. So I'm gonna be using this mustard powder. I just bought some fresh down at the Amish. I need to put it in my thing up there, my Tupperware thing. But use regular mustard, that's what I have it down for, is regular, just squirt mustard. But I, I, I don't have any, so that's sad. I eat it, well, mustard, just on a spoon. And that's why we don't have any, because it, it does it helps with leg cramps or anything like that. Okay, so it's got all that vinegar in it. Got that in there. Now, we're going to put the ketchup. And then we'll do the brown sugar. Okay, now I told you I was going to put a little more of this in there. The garlic, because I didn't have enough. So I put more in. It calls for two tablespoons of garlic. And I had one, barely one. So I just put another one in. It's only powder form. You just got to work with what you have. Now, two cups of ketchup, which I will be putting two and a half cups because I got the extra pound of meat in there. So remember, if you get a five pound tube, just add a half of you know, to add to that. You don't even have to do that, really. So this is a cup. Catch. Just measuring out to make sure I got enough in there. That's one. I got a bigger one, so... I wasn't sure what made a cup and what didn't. There's two cups. Now I'm going to put another half cup in there for that extra pound. Get that out of there. All right. Move there now. Now, I'm going to bring you over here and let you see this again.
We'll mix that all in there now. I'll see if you got this grease lingering around on the edges, see? When you, if you're gonna can this, um, just put it in the refrigerator when it cools down and it'll skim right off the top. That's what I'm gonna do with this. And one other time I made it and it did that and I just took me a bunch of paper towels and sucked it right off of there. You could drain it, but it doesn't say, I never did, you know, because I think that grease is going to help the flavors, and then you can skim it off. That's just the way you want to do it, whatever way. Okay, now we're going to put the brown sugar in. Oops, there's Tom. Okay, and now we're going to put three... Four. I'm going to put four in, but you put three. I'll give you the recipe since I got the extra pound. Put three tablespoons of brown sugar in with that Worcestershire sauce. That's what makes it good. And that's going to give your chili powder a little bit of a sweet taste. You know? Okay, now, see that's just darkening up now. Look at here, how much that's darkening up. Let me see. See that? See that broken up like that? Okay, there's it, that's it. Now you're going to let this simmer like this. I'm going to turn that down to, well, when you, when you, you don't want to bring that to a full, full boil. You just want to turn that down like to where you're seeing it simmering, okay? Simmering like this. You do that for one hour. You just let that lay there and simmer. which the, there's grease coming up on top. But this is, this, a uh, lot of the water will evaporate a little bit, but you let it simmer one hour. I'm not putting the tomato paste in now. I'm gonna wait for uh, probably about 45 minutes and then I'll put the tomato paste in and the one teaspoon of sugar. So there we go. I know it looks like a lot of grease, but that will come off. And plus, I just found out when I put it in there, it was hamburger, 80%. I usually buy ground chuck or higher, so this was hamburger that I accidentally picked up. So it'll do just the same. I've made it with both. You're not going to be eating tons of it. You're going to be putting it on a hot dog, hopefully. So there we are. That's just going to lay there and simmer now. And it's really going to even look better, you know, after it simmers for a while. And then um, what I'll do is I'll take a picture of it. But I'll just take this, and, and after I get this all simmered for an hour, um, I'm going to, I want to put a little bit of this in too. Chili sauce. About a tablespoon. You don't have to have it. It doesn't even, call, my recipe don't call for it. But I'm going to be using this in my uh, in some other things that I'm going to be canning. It's fun to always just work with it. So I'm going to let this cook for an hour. You know, just lay there and simmer and let it smell up the house real nice. 
And then in the meantime, while I'm doing that and letting that simmer, I will um, get the recipe on this video and you'll have the recipe then, okay? And if you get, you know, make it just like it says, if you add an extra pound of hamburger, you know, just throw in a little extra this and that. So I'm gonna turn that down even more because it's starting to boil and I want it to simmer. There we go. You'll see uh, it, you know, boiling here and there a little bit, but not a rapid one, okay? A simmer is when you see a real low boil here and there, you know. But mine was starting to boil up. So anyway, God bless you all. Be looking on this. I'm going to go right now and put this on there, okay? God bless you. Hot dog sauce.